welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. Let's do some more perk defense. This game is by Bobby Fischer and Pal Banco, one of Bobby Fischer's true masterpieces against such a world-class chess player. It's a beautiful perk defense. Banco does everything he can to overcome the really young Bobby Fischer. And, of course, he totally succeeds in losing to Bobby Fischer. But why he loses is really the story. Now, here we see Fischer, and, and Fischer did this most often against the uh, Perk defense. He goes for the Austrian attack. He puts all of it up there with pawns, and then he supports his center, and he just goes after his opponents. And uh, not to be deterred, Banco is properly developing in this defense as best he can. And now Bobby brings up the, the center, and Banco certainly castles. Now this is all typical standard perk defense. Bobby Fischer supporting his center. Banco getting ready to I the D4, keep the E under control and all that. Fisher usually put the bishop at d3 here. This is a great move, and, and we'll see why here in a little while. Now, look at what Banco is doing. You remember, when he brings the bishop out to pin the knight to the queen, the idea is this d4 pawn in the perk, because he's going to move this knight eventually somewhere, wherever, and the bishop is going to eye that pawn. This also prepares, because he's pinned this knight that guards that d-pawn, this also could truly be preparing a c5 or an e5 thrust to attack that center. You can't let the center just move up to you and cramp you and crunch you. Another option is to press the uh, knight here to attack directly that pawn, because this is holding that knight back and then to push the e5. I mean, there's all kinds of options here. This is beautiful, perfect perk defense. Right? Bobby says, nothing doing. Make up your mind. Are you going to stay there? Are you going to take it? Are you going to move back? Let's decide right now what you're going to do. Banco takes the pawn, or the knight pawn. And Bobby Fischer, rather than goofing up his pawn structure, returns fire with the queen. Now, it's true, at this point, the queen does not influence the d4. So, by this exchange, Banco has strengthened the possibility of getting that d4 pawn. You see how that works? He's, he's got that bishop there, and he can bring stuff out here to attack that d4 pawn. It's not a weakness right now. But he did take away one of the supporters, even though it helped Fisher develop. It's very important to see. And now here comes the knight c3. Here comes the knight c3, again, hitting that d4 pawn directly. Now the next proper move, I, I say proper advisedly, but Banco is certainly considering the push of the e5 to challenge that d4 pawn because he's got lots of options now against that d4 pawn. Fisher is well aware of this. He pulls his second bishop up to e3. That center is so solid. I mean, that is the rock-solid fortress right out there announcing, ta-da, here I am, and I'm coming after you. He's not challenging Banco to come after him. He is saying with this Austrian attack, here I come, ready or not, I'm coming at you with everything I've got. This is a great setup for that. This is sensational. Because Bobby Fischer has developed both of his bishops to strengthen his center, Banco says, now it's time. And he pops that e5. This, this is so typical perk defense. Now he's going to attack this center with everything he's got. D takes the c5 pawn. Bobby had an option of the D or the F pawn to attack the d5, right? He had those two options. 
Benko responds. D, take E5. Fisher can do a number of things here. He's got a great outpost for a knight right here, supported here. That's pretty good. The pawn is supported here so that the knight can't come in and take the pawn. So a knight right there would be pretty tough, although it is being hit twice by the queen and the knight. He can exchange this pawn, and then that will put Banco right here, and that's a great fork of a bishop and a queen. So how does Fisher open? I don't know what was I lying about. My camera ran out of space on the card. You know, cameras do stupid stuff like that all the time. I was explaining... I was explaining that the D-pawn took the E-pawn and the D-pawn took the E-pawn. And Fisher has a couple of options. The knight up to here, uh, the bishop over to here, etc. Fisher can exchange this pawn. He can take the pawn with the F-pawn. The problem with that is the knight responds and forks the bishop and the queen, so that's a nasty fork. Fisher sees this, of course. How does he get out of it? He presses the F pawn. Fabulous. That's fabulous. Now G virtually has to change out, and now Fisher has weakened the king pawn structure over here on the king's side. Now when you look at that, when you and I look at that, we say, well, you know, that's... I mean, Banco has it all under control. No, he doesn't. Not now. This is how far-sighted Fisher was. Fisher has already won this game. And he's a young kid here. He's already won the game. Watch how he does this. This, this is pure genius. Queen takes the f5. At this point, Banco had to have swallowed hard. And he had to have thought, uh, all right, wait a sec. You have a bishop coming into here. You have a bishop coming into here. You have a knight that can hop very speedily to here. Uh, you've got a king that can castle and put a rook right here on the open file. I mean, holy shish kebab. This is a king side attack, believe it or not, at this point. It's, the game is on. It's, it's incredible how Fisher does this. Well, knight comes to d4. Nice outpost for the knight. He's trying to block off some of the bishop power. I mean, the bishop can come up to here. Too. He's trying hard to uh, do what he can. Queen pops back down here to f2. Now his knight comes to e8, and he has to do a retreat in order to bring it back out to a more effective square, right? This is the idea behind that pawn. And finally, Fisher castles. But look at the, look at the uh, file here. Wow, now it's opening up, and you can virtually see he's prepared to siege. There's weaknesses all over. Uh, the F and the H6 squares are very weak because that pawn's gone. You say, well, they're not very weak because the bishop's there. Watch. That bishop means nothing to Fisher. Fisher also has a bishop of that color with a queen and a rook. Just watch the uh, operation here. This is incredibly interesting. Now... The knight does come back up here to d6. Queen goes to g3, pinning the bishop to the king, right? So the king gets out of the pin. He says, nah, I don't want to be in that position against this guy. Uh-uh, no thanks. Then queen bumps up to g4. Now he says, okay, I'm going to go c6. I've got to get a little bit of space and territory. Then the queen bumps up here to h5. She's just sort of of kind of sneaking up on him. <laughs> this is so incredible how Fisher does this. He just kind of takes his time. Beautiful chess. <laughs> this is phenomenal. Queen comes to e8 because, of course, you can see the real problem here. Although he's got the, bish the, the knight there, but I guess Bobby Fisher, you're going to need more than two pieces protecting a point. Bishop takes the d4. A center attack. Fisher is eliminating Banco's center attack. You notice that? I mean, the whole center here is just pure red, right? White, but red. E takes d4. Threatening the knight. Now for the fireworks. 
Boom! Oh, the Alican block. Usually done on one of these squares. Here, Fisher puts that right there, and you go, huh? Yeah, huh. What this move does is it prevents the F pawn from coming up and protecting or fighting against that E pawn. That virtually blocks the pawn, and you say, that's stupid. The bishop can take the rook. No, it's not that easy. It's just not that easy, because then you press the pawn. If the bishop took the rook, you press the pawn and fork the knight and the bishop, and then the bishop has to come back down, but now you've got an open space here because you press the pawn, and the queen goes here and goes mate. I, I, uh, that is the move. That is so beautiful. Banco sees that, so all he can do is go to king g8. And now, true to form, you press the e5 pawn anyway, <laughs> because now the game is over. And that ended the game right there, whether, whether Banco knew it or not. He goes to h6, and now Fisher goes to e2. And here is where Banco resigned. You go, huh? Banco resigned? Yeah, Banco resigned. Here's why. I was smart enough to write this down so that I could show you the finish. There is no defense to a very major threat here that Fisher has. I've tried to kind of give you the background and details up to this point. The move that Fisher will do next is he's going to take that knight. And that's going to signal the end of the game. There is nothing Banco can do now to prevent checkmate. If Banco trying to get out of this, if he moves his knight to b5, then queen goes to f5. And you say, yeah, well, so he can't take the, the pawn with the rook because the rook and the queen's got it covered. That's not the move Fisher's looking at. Remember, you got a bishop down here. The queen will go right to there. Checkmate. And that's virtually, you can't stop it, right? So that's the move if the knight goes to b5. If the bishop takes the rook, then you don't take the bishop or the knight, even though that's a beautiful pawn fork. No, queen takes h6. And now checkmate is virtually unavoidable. You cannot prevent the queen from going into seven. What, what can you do? There's virtually nothing you can do to prevent it. So that was the, uh, that was the very memorable game of Bobby Fischer beating Pal Benko. I found that in my memorable 60 games by Bobby Fischer. An excellent and very fun book to play through those games. They're, uh, they're fun. I'm not all the way through it yet. I've played several of them, but... Uh, this one with the perk defense was a memorable event. Fisher really made news when he stuck that rook there on the Alicum block. That was powerful to do against Pau Banco. You have to have a little foresight to be able to make those kind of grandmaster moves. Ha! Especially when you're a young kid. So, Anyway, there's your video to look at and practice and study. This perk defense, there are a lot of excellent games left that I want to show you to, to you, so... Study hard, be well, do good. Laugh often, and remember, I will see you in the next video.